Hey there. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since uh, I've posted on this channel. I think about two years to be exact. Yeah, I've been working on a different uh, YouTube channel, so that's why I haven't been posting on here. That channel's not really going anywhere, so I decided to kind of come back and uh, check this uh, channel out again. And I noticed that there was a lot of people asking some questions on how to digitize or get footage from a tape onto your computer. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Seems like a lot of the uh, camera videos have gotten some good uh, some good feedback and uh, a lot of people have watched the content. So didn't know you guys liked uh, classic cameras as much as I do. So if you're new to this channel and uh, if this video helps you out at all, make sure you like it and subscribe. I want to be talking about a lot more uh, classic cameras and stuff that I own. Um, specifically like analog cameras and Stuff like that. I'm not a camera expert by any means, but I definitely am intrigued by them and I definitely love playing with cameras and video cameras and making videos and stuff like that. So if you're into all that as well, definitely subscribe and uh, yeah, let's get into this. So I have this here, mini DV tape. Obviously it's gotta go into a camera for this to work. So I'm gonna be using my Canon XL1. So this is the Canon XL1. The um, reason why I'm going to use this is because I still have the, the GL1, um, but it only has S-Video plug-in and it doesn't have the composite. It's just, it, it'll make it easier for me to get the footage off of this than it would the GL1, and I will explain that later. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the, the tape in. So the next thing that I use is, well this one's a little bit outdated, but this is the Ion Video to PC. It is a little box that recognizes your camera that you are using, and it tells the computer um, that, hey, there's a camera connected to me, and there's, boom, a video that pops up. So let me make it more simple. So this thing, can work with any camera out there that has S video or composite video or the RCA jack cables, the red, white, and yellow cables. This will work with most uh, VHS cameras. It'll work with VHS C cameras, Hi8 cameras, and mini DV cameras. Um, there's some other weird formats out there as well, like uh, the DVD cameras and stuff like that. Yeah, this will work with any of those as long as you have anything that looks like that. Now they have different options of these out there nowadays. They have ones that are, uh, it's like the Ion Video to SD. So it's like a little box that you plug your camera into and it actually will record the footage onto an SD card instead of having to plug it into the computer and doing it that way because that way it's kind of a lot more of a, it's more of a hassle and um, I guess the other way would be um, it's a little bit easier to do on the go. So if you want to make a video and you're out, I don't know, on vacation or something like that and you want to have a way to transfer your tape footage onto an SD card, that is a easier way to do it. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds out there. You can do your research and stuff like that. This is kind of an older one. I don't know if they even sell this one anymore. You might be able to find them used on eBay. So if you buy this, um, it will come with a DVD or uh, software and what you'll do is you'll pop it into your computer if you have a CD-ROM and you'll download the driver and you'll download the uh, video editing software. The driver is what makes the computer recognize that there is a camera connected to it and then the editing software um, is what you would use to record the video onto the laptop or computer or whatever you have. And then once you have the video recorded, you can use the editing software that's in it to make a video. It's not like the best editing software, but it is something that is super easy to use and kind of get your foot in the door in editing if you want to do that. And you also have a way on the software where you can actually um, burn your videos to a DVD if you want to do it that way. It's kind of an outdated way to do it, but 
if you still like having DVDs and stuff like that, you can do that as well. So I'll hook this up and I will show you how this works. Now I don't know how to screen record, so I'm going to be recording really up close to my laptop. You have your RCA cables or composite component. Someone tell me what it's actually called. Is it composite or is it component? I don't know. But then you also have your S video. For composite or component, whatever it's called, you're gonna plug all three of these in to all these colors and then and then you're gonna do the opposite on this side. Now, if you have a camera that has S video, what you will do is you're going to plug the red and white cables in. So this is your two audio cables. You'll plug those in. And then the S video is obviously your video. So S video is gonna give you a better image quality over the composite or component. So something that I didn't actually know for a long time, um, I thought the S video also had the audio in it, but you actually have to connect the composite um, cables for the audio as well. So you'll have those plugged in with your S video cable. But today we're just gonna be using composite just because it's simple. So I'll plug the yellow one back in and then I have my box here and I will plug the colors to where they're supposed to go. And then once you have your video, um, your software is downloaded and all that, the other side comes off as a USB, which we'll just plug into the side of your laptop or computer. And I have an older laptop that I use this for, so I will plug this all in and get it going. All right, so I got the old laptop booted up here. And as you can see right here where my mouse is, it's called PowerDirect. This is where you're gonna to wanna to go into. This is what you will be downloading onto your laptop or computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into here. Okay, so now when you're in here, it's gonna bring you to the editing area of PowerDirector. So you're gonna to wanna to go up here and you wanna to go to Capture. Now that we're on Capture, you have all these little options up here of what it recognizes. So it's gonna recognize ABCHD, audio and your webcam uh, if you have one on your laptop. So we are on this one right here. This is a TV signal. So nothing is popping up yet because the camera is not on yet. So if you don't have a camera that can turn on, then you're gonna have to find a way to add a power supply to it or put a battery in it for it to turn on because there's nothing there for it to recognize. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Now you're gonna to wanna to turn it to VCR because that is the playback mode, obviously. And you're gonna to want to rewind to a spot where you want to record at. So for me, I am recording all the way back to the beginning of the tape. And so when you find a spot you wanna start recording at, you're gonna hit play on your camera and then you're gonna hit record down here when you are ready to record. Now, this is going to record in real time. So depending on how much video or footage that you have, say if it's a half an hour long of footage, then it's gonna take a half an hour to record it and capture it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and record this. And that's pretty much it for this part. All right, so once you're done recording, what you wanted to record, this little window will pop up here after you hit the stop button over here and it'll give you an option to name your file. I usually just leave it as capture and then it just goes up from <laughs> the number that I started at. So this is my 75th capture that I've done in this software. So I'm just gonna hit okay and then it has it right up here, but some other little things that you'll notice in here. So 
When you have a camera connected, this little thing will pop up right here, and it will pop up white, like how these ones are, telling you that there is something there that is connected. So, you can also set time limits for how long it will record for, and a size limit, so if your file gets too big, or you can set it to a certain size, so that way it doesn't get too big and you can put it onto an SD card or a thumb drive or like I said you can burn it onto a DVD. You can do it that way, you can set that, it tells you how much space you have on your computer. So I have uh, more used space than I do free space but this computer actually has quite a bit of space on it. So what I usually do is I go over to edit after I have recorded my video and you'll see that it pops up right here I have the capture 75 and it'll automatically put it on this here timeline once it's on this timeline you can go up here to produce and you can cut it up and all that so if you want to use your video and edit a video this way um, you can add music and all that fun stuff I haven't really played around with this editing software that much but you can add text and music and all kinds of different stuff so once you get done doing whatever you want to do with this or if you just want to have it raw as it is and edit it into a different editing software you can do that so you can go up here to produce and once you're in produce um, if you're going to be making videos compatible with YouTube. YouTube has the H.264 format or the AVC. You're going to want to choose that and you want to hit hardware video encoder and then if you want to, you don't have to, you want to hit enable preview during production. So that way once it is producing your video into a file, you'll see it play up here as it goes. So I usually do that, and then you just come over here and you hit start. So once the video is done rendering, this output folder is telling you where it's at. I really need to change mine because I have to really go deep into where it's at. So you can hit this little three arrows here and it'll bring it up. I had to do a little bit of digging like I said before but I found it. You can redirect where the file is saved to so you can have it just go straight to a flash drive but I don't know why I do it this way. <laughs> this way makes it so much harder. Anyway so this is it. This is the Capture 75. So now if you have a SD card or a USB drive you can go ahead and put it on there or have it wherever you want and do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on a thumb drive, a USB drive, and throw it on my other laptop to edit together a little video for you to show you what the after product is. And uh, so yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions on how all this works, definitely leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try my best to help you out how I can and uh, so yeah kind of uh, kind of tedious takes a little bit thank you for watching if this helped you in any way make sure you like the video and if you enjoy these videos make sure you subscribe to the channel enjoy the little scootering montage of me and my friend